Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. In this video, we are going to take a look on the definition of wind loads according to the Eurocode as suggested by our dear subscriber Deepak Patil, who is a enthusiastic follower of our channel and I'd like to extend my thanks for him for all the support to the channel. Alright, so before I start, I highly recommend that you watch the video on wind loads that was defined before on the ASCE code because parts of what I'm going to explain right now is going to be repeated uh, as per the ASCE video. So to do that, I'm going to open the two-dimensional frame design uh, because robot has actually limitations when assuming wind loads on structures. It is unable to assume a wind load on a 3D structure. It is only able to assume a wind load on a 2D structure and then use the 2D structure to generate a 3D structure from that base structure. Now, this is not how we usually define wind loads. This is once again a weakness because usually what ends up happening is, for example, in ETAPS or SAP or other structural softwares, which I also know and use a lot, what ends up happening is that you define the full structure and then you use, after you define the full structure and check its stability, you use its capabilities to assume wind loads and to apply those wind loads on the structure. So, once again, a disclaimer that robot has a weakness there and a shout out to the developers to try and improve that. This doesn't, ma this doesn't make robots a weak software because it has tons of other functionalities that uh, warrant it to be used even with this little weakness. So to start with, I'm going to assume me my two-dimensional uh, projection of that structure. So I'll assume that I have columns in the X like this, and I have some stories, for example, 0, 3, and 6. So it's a two-story, two-bay uh, structure. And for this, I'm going to assume it's a framed structure. Notice I am not paying attention to the sections because it's not my goal today to assume sections or to perform structural design. My goal today is to explain wind loads in Eurocode and show you how those wind loads are implemented in robot. So a quick disclaimer that I'm not really paying attention to uh, the sections or the modeling of the structure. So I'm not paying attention if I need to uh, basically internal hinge any of those uh, connections. Because I want to basically once again hint to the fact that you in steel structures have to think about the connection between the beams and the columns as the assumption you assume in those connections reflects itself in the design of those connections. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to fix my entire structure. Uh, so I hope that this disclaimer was clear enough. And now I'm going to start basically assuming my wind load. Now to assume a wind load, you go to loads wind and snow loads, and there is wind and snow 2D to 3D. This is basically where you assume your wind loads and convert them from a 2D wind load to a 3D wind load. The first thing that robot asks you is basically to know what is the envelope, meaning what is the outer exterior of your structure, because the outer exterior of the structure is what will be, uh, up, what will be affected by the pressures from wind load. So if you click on auto, you can see that this robot automatically has highlighted the exteriors for you and it has written the number of elements that correspond to that exterior. You cannot simply say OK or close because you need to define your wind load. So if you click on parameters, this is where the fun starts. However, a quick important thing is that you see that you have ASCE 7 to 16 or ASCE 7 2016. Now this is not what our subscriber and a friend wants, he actually wants us to use the Euro code. So I should very quickly go to Tools, uh, Preferences, go to Loads, which is basically Design uh, Codes, Loads, and switch from the ASCE to the Euro code. Now I cannot see Euro code here, so you can click on More and select the Euro code that you want. Of course, you have a lot of Euro codes here because, because each um, each uh, country has its own national annex. So for me, I'm gonna use the national, I'm just gonna use the plain Euro code. You can of course choose any national annex you want for any country you want. I'm gonna choose the plain Euro code without any national annex. Now the Euro code without any national annex works fine. Now a quick idea about this Euro code. The Euro code is basically a skeletal code that can be adjusted to uh, meet and suit the different countries that correspond to the European Union by allowing them to apply national annexes. National annexes are 
values, factors, and even equations that can override and overrule the equations that are in the Euro code. It's kind of a nice dynamics. I personally like that. So I click on OK right now and select that. We can save the parameters as default, but I don't want to do that because I'm kind of the ACI guy. I'm kind of the American code guy. All right, so now we have our code, but it doesn't reflect here. So of course I have to close it and reopen it again to make sure that it reflects the new code. Yes, it's reflecting now. Auto once again selects the perimeter and you click on parameters to start defining the Euro code stuff. Now, to understand this, I have to of course show you what everything is all about. Now, this is gonna be a quick theoretical background because this is something I, you have requested from me to explain. Now, why do we have wind loads? Because of simple facts of Newton's laws and aero slash fluid dynamics, meaning that, well, if an object is moving, then you cannot change its state of moving or its direction without applying a force. Now, in terms of air, you have air that is moving at a certain wind speed, and this air that is moving at a certain wind speed will hit a house, and when the air meets the house, the air gets deflected, meaning parts of the air is going to go up, Parts of the air is going to go from the right side or from the left side, but for now I will focus on the parts of the air that go up. Now when the air brushes up, you are actually imparting a pressure force here, because you need a force to make the air go up. This applies a positive pressure because uh, basically air is blowing against that side. Now in the opposite side, you have of course the air going back to the ground, and this creates a suction. And by the way, this is partly why aircrafts can fly, but albeit it's a little bit different. But once again, this low pressure zone is what causes suction in that position, meaning that you have pressure or forces going into the structure from one side and forces going out of the structure from the other side. Now, of course, those depends on the angles of those surfaces, but truth to be said, usually the windward side, and we call this windward side because it's the side of the wind, Usually the windward side is, has positive pressures and the leeward side has the negative pressures. The leeward side is the side opposite of where the wind is blowing. This is of course a side view and we have to check the effect of wind on all possible directions, meaning that we have to check the east-west. We have to check the west-east direction, the east-west direction, the north-south direction and the south-north direction, those orthogonal directions. One could think and ask, well, what about this direction? Well, it's the same thing, but you can actually cosine and sine it to become a northwest, uh, a north, south, and east, west direction. So this is a quick, uh, important introduction to why wind loads do cause pressures. Now, this pressure is calculated from something called the dynamic pressure because things change dynamically here, and that's why you have a pressure. Because this is the hydrostatic pressure, the head, and this is the pressure normal, the static pressure. And, well, we are assuming that the pressure inside the house and the pressure outside the house uh, hydrostatically and statically are the same. So the only difference here that we have is the pressure due to dynamics, and this is rho v square over 2. I only want to say that it depends on a factor and a velocity. Of course, the factor here is rho v square over 2. This works for a perfect pipe, but our structure here is far away than perfect and the winds are far away than perfect because, for example, the wind speed on top would be faster than the wind speed on bottom because the wind speed on bottom is close to the ground, so you have something called the ground effect and the roughness of the ground to be taken care of. This is a lot of stuff to be internalized and I will very quickly explain this for our dear subscribers who are fans of the Eurocode. So to start with, this is one of the design equations that you will be using, and you can see that you have the half rho v square there, with some modifications that have to do with the roughness and the importance and type of structure. In other words, it's just a factor multiplied by the base wind pressure, because the base wind pressure includes half v square. So in other words, it's a factor multiplied by the pressure half v square, which is what you have seen in the dynamic pressure. Now this factor depends on a lot of stuff, and I want to explain it very quickly. Now first of all, how do I calculate this pressure? This pressure is calculated by something called the basic wind speed. Now please notice, a this disclaimer, I am not of Eurocode background, I am of American code background, 
So I hope that I don't mess up any of those terms. So VB is the basic wind velocity. Now, how do you define this basic wind velocity? Well, uh, you need to check the code. It's like basically a wind speed that has a recurrence of certain years at measure at a certain height. Uh, yeah, well, it of course is calculated based on some sort of calculation here, which is VBO. And VBO is the fundamental wind speed, and VB is the uh, VBO is the fundamental wind speed, and VB is the modified wind speed, where the season gets into account and the direction of wind blowing gets into account. So yeah, uh, furthermore, your VB gets used to calculate something called VM, and VM in this case is the mean wind velocity, because you see here that this equation has nothing to do with the structure or its position or its location. Here you have suddenly a lot of stuff to do with the structure and the location. CR, you can see, is something Z over Z, and you can see heights here. And KR is a factor that basically... And by the way, CR is the roughness factor, so KR has to do with the terrain, I think. And if I check the code very quickly, KR is something called the terrain factor. Terrain factor means that, well, the wind speed uh, depends on where you are. If you are near the shore, then of course there is little to no effect of the terrain. And if you are in the city, then there is a lot of terrain uh, to be taken into account. And if you are, for example, in a village a little bit far away from the sea, then there is slightly terrain to be taken into account. You know, the hills and valleys that you see. All right, so this is basic stuff from the terrain. Now, of course, those values are taken from the code. There are tables to be taken from the code. For example, uh, KR uh, equals, there we go, Z0 over Z02. And uh, Z0, according to uh, the Euro code here, is 0 0.05, according to terrain category 2, table 4.1. So what I'm trying to say is this stuff is found in tables. But I want to make sense of it very quickly just to, for us to understand. So to understand the Euro code, I'm not going to go through all those equations, but to understand the Euro code, the Euro code asks the question, what is the dynamic pressure that air flowing at a certain speed will cause? And this is based on something called fluid dynamics, rho v square over 2. Now this is pure fluid dynamics. However, in real life, we have different stuff. We have this stuff, which is some factor depending on the structure and the position, multiplied by rho v. In this case, it's vm, uh, which we will use to design our speeds. Now, what's vm, you ask? vm is the speed that is modified to account for the structure, terrain, and stuff. Now, how do I get that? From some sort of modification factors and some sort of base speed. This base speed is the base speed depending on the season and the direction, which is measured, vbo multiplied by some factor for season and some factor for directionality. This is extremely a lot of stuff, but I needed to give you a very quick a glimpse here because the robot does account for that. You see, when you go to wind, you see all the stuff I've talked about, like this is the C for season, this is C for direction, and all those other uh, factors that you can use. Now, for now, I leave it for you because you need to have solid background in the Eurocode and wind load. I just try to uh, quickly like give you a glimpse on uh, the equations inside the euro code. Now, to finalize, once you have the pressure, which is the base pressure, you need to find the pressures on each of those walls because the base pressure needs to be calculated for each wall alone. There are walls that are under there are walls that are under pressure, uh, positive pressure. There are walls that are under suction, as you can see here, and most likely the leeward side is under negative pressure or under suction. For the windward side, this surface uh, is sometimes even under uh, compression, under positive pressure, at least in the SCE code. Maybe it's different than the Euro code, I don't know. Uh, I told you I'm not, a, I'm not a very experienced authority in Euro codes, but I kind of like that. This is still similar to the SCE code. In theory, of course, the factors are totally different. And to finalize, uh, there was a nice, uh, I think there was a nice step-by-step -step procedure to do that, to calculate the wind load. This is given in the Euro code, table 5.1. It's really good because it gives you the step-by-step -step procedure that you should follow to be able to calculate the pressure on each and every wall on the structure. So I hope this quick uh, theoretical background helps you in understanding what we should be doing. For me, I will leave those factors as it is because you need to know yourself what the factors are. 
Uh, still, you can see that you have those terrain types, and I've told you that depending on where your terrain is, your different things will happen to your basic wind speed, which to transform it to the mean wind speed. You have, for example, coastal areas, beaches, you have lake areas. Those are terrains that don't have a lot of uh, roughness. They don't have a lot of uh, spikes. It's just a flat terrain. And you can see that the flatness decreases and the roughness increases the more you go. Because here, for example, you are at coastal waves areas, which is perfectly flat. Here you have lake areas or flat areas, which are like flat as far as the eye can see. Here you have some, you know, some cultivation areas, meaning this is where you uh, have plants and where you have farms. Now farms do have some sheds and they have some roughness. Here you start with talking about industrial areas. Now industrial areas still have huge structures that have smooth surfaces. Suburban areas are, well, as the name suggests, not urban areas. And here you have towns, basically. Urban areas where you have 15% of structures with a height more than 15 meters. 15 meters is almost a five-story, six-story structure. So yeah, I think you would be using those two a lot because, I mean, you're designing usually in urban cities. The coastal areas are more dangerous. There is no roughness that helps reduce the wind speed. I will not be calculating snow, so uh, I only want to calculate uh, wind. Of course, you can check out the snow and understand how snow is calculated in the Eurocode. Now, one final thing that remains before generating the 3D structure is to go back here and just quickly check that if you want wind and snow, I don't want snow. I want my total depth to be 20 meters with five bays. This is uh, the definition of the structure that will be generated. So going back to my parameters, I check all my parameters if those are the things I want. I can start generating. And if you right now click on generate 3D, so it's calculating, and the end result is basically this structure. And you can see that the structure we have is this one, of course. Once again, this is one of the limitations of robot. We need to connect the structures together, so I'll just very quickly do that and video edit this. So, give me a second. Yeah, so basically after video editing this, you can see that you have the pressure applied on the structure, and you can continue modeling your structure as you want and designing it as you want. Once again, this pressure has been applied on all the frames, and uh, I want to quickly mention that this is basically the weakness of robots because it applies pressures on 2D frames, and then, I just hide that, it applies pressures on 2D frames, and then basically it copies the frames like one, two, three, four, five times, depending on what you input, and then you can continue modeling. Now, truth to be said, final thoughts on this, I am really underwhelmed by robots' abilities to model wind loads because it's some kind of counterintuitive. Usually, the normal uh, procedure of modeling stuff is that you erect the full structure and model it, and then you start applying forces, or maybe even apply forces and modeling as you go on. For, for wind loads, this is totally different because you need to plan ahead how your structure looks like, meaning that you will have to plan the basically the projection first, and then you cannot change anything because you will apply and generate the wind loads, which are generated based on the projection that you have prepared, and then it gets basically uh, copied multiple times, and you, there is no way you can change your projection because if you change your projection, the wind loads become invalid and you have to do the whole process all over again, which is, I don't know, not really the smoothest and best of processes. But this is something I have shared before in the ASCE video. Anyway, uh, still I want to say that Autodesk Robots, even with this weakness, should not be discouraged to be used. It has a multitude, a plethora of amazing functions that you can use. I mean, you have seen multiple videos of nonlinear analysis and offsets and stuff like that. So it's still, even with this weakness, it still warrants you to use Autodesk Robot as your uh, tool of design and modeling. So yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. Uh, this is, once again, a very short video. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you have enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. It helps a lot, especially subscribing, because it increases the reach of my channel. This is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we will catch you in the next video.